rich, mobile and settled communities. Let's learn about caste distinction in ancient and medieval India. Many historians and social scientists accepted the nation that a caste division in society is a uniquely Indian feature and that Indian society. However, unequal caste divisions are to be found in the history of most nations. In all non-egalitarian societies where wealth and political power were unequally distributed, some form of social inequity appeared and often meant hereditary privileges. The Vedic people grouped roles in society into four varnas known as Brahmin, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Social divisions in the early Vedic period a. With increasing emphasis on ritual and sacrifices. The Kshatriyas were the warriors and ruling. b. The Vaishyas were originally cultivators, but in the later Vedic period, many of them had shifted their occupation to trade and crafts. One important feature of the caste division was that the Shudra was not owned by the upper castes, but the caste system became rigid with the passage of time. Women in Rig Vedic times were in a much better position as compared to the later Vedic age. In the Rig Vedic times, they could attend assemblies and offer sacrifices along with their husbands, but later, Though women were treated well, in a general, they occupied a lower position in society. Although the four main classes or varnas were the theoretical basis for the caste system, the Indian caste system was actually composed of many smaller and more numerous subgroups known as jatis. Jati literally means birth. Each jati typically job function in Hindu society. During this period, Four general kinds of regulations came into existence. Whom one could eat with or take food from only your caste or higher. Whom one could marry only your caste. Hypergamy and hypogamy were strictly prohibited. Hypergamy is when a man of higher caste marries a woman of a lower caste. In hypogamy, a woman from a higher caste marries a man of a lower caste. You could only practice the trade of your group. Guilds were based on caste or jati lines. Caste distinction in medieval India In the Rajput period, the caste system became very rigid and the Brahmins became more powerful, enjoyed many privileges. They were exempted from paying taxes, lighter punishment for certain offences, exempted from capital punishment. During this period, a large number of new castes or sub-castes also came into existence, like carders, weavers, smiths, fishermen, brewers, oilmen, cowheats, carpenters, etc. came into existence. Women were also in poor condition during the period. The practice of polygamy was very common. The birth of a daughter was not liked as she was seen as a burden on the family. Women were socially conditioned to become sati after the confiscation of a kingdom. The women practiced johar, a mass suicide in order to escape defilement at the hands of the victor of Alain faith. There is a famous story of Queen Padmini of Chittor, wife of King Ratan Singh, who led the Rajput ladies to Johar in the face of eminent attack from Alauddin Khilji, the Sultan of Delhi. Social conditions under Muslim rule The sultans had two primary castes, the Hindus and the Muslims. According to Ibn Battuta, the society was divided into four major groups, the aristocracy, the priests, the townspeople and the peasants. The caste system was followed with great rigidity. Women were expected to respect the parda system. Slavery was rampant. However, slave enjoyed a higher status than the untouchables or shudras. The Hindus and Muslims came closer under the Mughal rulers. A new religion named Dine Illahi was propounded by Akbar, which was syncreated from the best elements of several other religions.
This helps to reconcile the sectarian differences among his subject. The Bhakti and Sufi Movements The medieval times saw a complete transformation of orthodox Hinduism. Now came the time of the emotional, passionate bhakti or love for one's own God expression. Love songs for Krishna and Rama were written and sung by saints. The common people followed spiritual saints or gurus whose songs and biographies soon became the new scriptures. As a result, the Brahmins lost their glorified position in the society. Bhakti movement spread everywhere throughout it. The saints embraced men from all castes as their followers. They spread Bhakti movement far and wide throughout India. Guru Nanak introduced the concept of a common meal or langar. In India society, this was a revolutionary concept where all people, high or low, rich or poor, male or female, would sit as equal in the same pangat, rows or lines to share and enjoy the food together. The Bhakti saints like Eknath, Gyaneshwara, Ramananda, Chaitanya, Kabir have all denounced the caste system and accepted disciples from every stratum of the societal order. Khwaja Muinuddin Chishti, Baba Farid, Khwaja Nizamuddin Aliya, who preached the oneness of human being and believed in the brotherhood of all men. However, the other kinds of discriminations on the basis of caste, creed, religion and sex prevailing in the medieval period were challenged in the 19th century when various social reformers such as Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Swami Dayanand Saraswati and Swami Vivekananda called for the formation of a secular India.